So I wanted to talk about the importance of physical media in a streaming, I don't know, society, I guess. Physical media, the importance of having a physical copy of a disc, of a movie, sorry, not a physical copy of a disc, a physical copy of a movie in uh, a streaming kind of now. Um, I'm not against streaming. I pay for too many. I pay for Disney Plus, Paramount Plus, Netflix, Prime. What else is there? Uh, four. I pay for four. Uh, I think. I don't know if there's any more than that. So it's Netflix, Disney, Prime, Paramount. Oh, I pay for Shudder as well. I don't know why. I don't use Shudder, um, which I'm going to cancel. But the point uh, I, I want to talk about is um, these, while they're convenient, that's essentially what streaming is. It's convenient because you've got a library of movies and TV shows that you can watch just at the click of a button. But you have to go through menus to find the details that you want to know about the TV show. So Disney Plus, for example, you click on a movie... You have to go across three tabs or two tabs to uh, get the synopsis, to get the cast, and to get some other information that you need. Um, with physical media, it's all on the back of the box. The, the synopsis, the cast, the director, the, the technical uh, details that you need to know, the runtime, etc. This stuff is all on the back of the boxes. Now, the, what I want to talk about is why... Like physical media, DVDs, Blu-rays, 4Ks, VHS is important in a streaming age. Um, I mean, oh, you've seen you've seen this lot. This is this is my collection. Well, it's a percentage of my collection. These are all my Blu-rays. I have a ton of DVDs that I've shown in the past. Um, what I wanted to talk about is why I think owning a collection kind of beats streaming for a couple of reasons. Um, okay, for example, I could stand there and I could choose a film. Um, it's, it's no different to scrolling through pages and pages of Netflix. You scroll through thousands of films or hundreds of films. Uh, on a shelf, so you go through across and what shall I watch? What shall I watch? And then you find a film, say maybe something like uh, Sicaro. So maybe I fancy watching Sicaro, so I'll pop Sicaro on. It's the same. It's the same as Netflix as um, Disney Plus as Prime. But what about the movies that you can't find on the streaming services? Uh, films that are available on Blu-ray and on DVD. DVD is probably the better option because a lot of Blu-rays are still getting uh, transfers and 4K upgrades and stuff. Some stuff hasn't even ever been released on Blu-ray. And the reason I'm talking about these is because yesterday I was going through some uh, DVDs and storage and I found a couple of movies that one, I, I'm aware, I think one of them has had a Blu-ray release in the States um, by Shout Factory, which is, I think was on a limited, I don't know how many they did. Uh, it might have been Keen or Laura, I'm not sure. But I'm not multi-region for Blu-rays. I tried it. I had a few. I've still got a couple of multi-region, well, of Region A Blues that I can't, I don't particularly want to get rid of because I might get some, I'm, I might get another... Um, region one player. I'm not a hundred percent sure yet, but um, I had I had the the Shout Factory Tank Girl. Tank Girl is one of my favourites. I love Tank Girl, but it was hit or miss whether or not the Blu-ray was going to play. Even though the multi-region player that I owned, the Pioneer um, player, it did play multi-region uh, discs, but only when it felt like it. Even though it was set to Region A. So it was it was hit or miss whether or not the uh, discs were going to play. Um, so 
in the end, that DVD player, well, that Blu-ray player uh, decided uh, it didn't want to play any discs. It didn't want to play Region A, Region B, Region C, or any... It didn't even read DVDs in the end. It was... I only think... I think I had it for like two years before it went to the big electrical skip in the sky. But the reason I found... Well, I, I pulled these discs out thinking that, like... You can't really get these, especially in the UK. You can't really get these movies on um, on Blu-ray, and one of them I don't think has ever been released in the UK on DVD, let alone Blu-ray. So this is the importance of having a catalogue of movies that you can go to when the streaming services don't have the film you want. Now, so another reason for Bene uh, physical media benefiting over uh, streaming is um, when they put a film onto streaming services it's only for a limited time unless it's a Netflix original or it's made by Disney Plus or it's made by Prime it's a Prime original um, so they're only on for a, like a limited time it might be on for six months and then they'll take it off Harry Potter movies is a good example um, for a long time Harry Potter was only available on Now TV uh, now, Now TV is the Sky, essentially Sky Movies subscription-based uh, service. They've got a deal with HBO, which um, is owned by Warner Brothers. Uh, so Warner Brothers stuff gets put on Now TV. Now TV, I think, is fourteen ninety nine a month. Now, I'm not paying that. I already pay for Netflix, which is ten ninety nine a month. I already pay pay for Disney Plus, which I, I think is nine ninety nine a month. Oh, I pay seven ninety nine a month for um, Prime, four ninety nine a month for uh, Paramount Plus, and I think it's four ninety nine a month for uh, Shudder as well. So it adds up, but you can nip into a charity shop in the UK and and find a film that you can't find on the streaming services for 50p. And then you've got that copy. Sure, the picture quality is not going to be amazing, but it's going to be better than the the crappy VHS rips that you find on YouTube. In fact, one of these films is available on YouTube in a really, really almost unwatchable version. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, as an example, the first is Terminal Invasion. Now, this is a, a released by Universal on DVD. It's never had a Blu-ray release in the UK. It had a Blu-ray release in America from Shout Factory or Scream Factory or Kino. I'm not sure which one it was. This is a schlocky B-movie riff on um, The Thing. This is directed by Sean S. Cunningham, the guy who directed uh, Friday the 13th, and it stars Bruce Campbell. This film is crap, but awesome at the same time because of how bad and how cheesy it is. Now, I've just watched this. I watched this last night. I pulled it out of the out of storage. Like I said, it's crap. But it's here. It's in my hand. I he I have it. Like I saw it in a box. I was like, I haven't seen that in ages. Why don't I watch that? So here is Terminal Invasion. That's another. That's a film that I watched last night that I would not be able to find on any other streaming service again. You might be able to find it on YouTube uh, that someone's uploaded, but it's either going to be in parts or it's going to be low quality. This DVD, run through an upscaler, it looks amazing. But again, this is just schlocky B-movie crap that you wouldn't think twice to, to really watch, but it's in my collection. I saw it and I was just like, I'm going to watch Terminal Invasion because I haven't seen it in a while and it's a fun movie. Another one. Which, uh, again, is on you. This one is on YouTube, but this one is unwatchable. This one I paid 50p for in a charity shop about four years ago. And it's been, in, again, this has been in storage. Now, I have never seen this anywhere else. I've never seen this out anywhere else. It's Felix the Cat, the movie. I remember watching this when I was a kid, like in the early 90s. And I remember just picking it up, seeing it in a charity shop and being... Felix the Cat the movie. I haven't seen that since I was very, very small. And again, this is what I was saying. You don't have to go through tabs to find like the information that you need to find for the film. It's all on the back. Technical aspects. Well, it's got... I don't think it says what... I think it's 4 by 3 I don't, I don't think it says that now. But you get the artwork. I mean, that artwork's 
pretty cool. Maybe not the uh, the font used for Felix the Cat. But then you've got the disc inside. I mean, the Hollywood DVD, when they were around, they put out some budget discs. And this was one of them. Again, this is an animated film I haven't seen in must be 30 years. Well, I'm 40, so yeah, it must be 30 years since I last saw this. And I was just thinking, thank God I have a DVD collection. Because something like this might be lost to time, if you know what I mean. I mean, I don't know. I can't remember if it's any good or not. I mean, pfft. but it's it's here. It's a physical copy of something. It's a physical copy of Felix the Cat the movie. And it just, it, it blows my mind that I'm able to just hold this 1987 random ass Felix the Cat movie DVD in my hand with artwork and with information on the back and a disc. Like this movie, like it's it's so obscure. It's it's really really obscure. It's like Meet the Feebles, the uh, the Peter Jackson movie. I have that on DVD. I have a Korean DVD of that that I've I bought maybe ten twelve years ago. But again, it's having the physical copy of it. And the last one now that this is a film that I know has never had a UK release. Um, this I think is a German DVD, maybe. I think it's German DVD. And uh, now, I don't think many people will know that this um, this was remade by Tony Scott um, with Denzel Washington. Uh, this is Man on Fire. This is the original Man on Fire starring Scott Glenn and Joe Pesci. This is a great movie, by the way. Um, it's not as good as the Tony Scott uh, Denzel Washington movie. But this... Uh, has that kind of late 80s European sort of action thrillery kind of feel to it. In fact, the closest in sort of atmosphere and maybe aesthetic I can think of would be uh, John Frankenheimer's Ronin is probably the closest in sort of uh, aesthetic -y, aesthetically like matching it. But um, this is a really cool film. And Again, I've never this. Had, I don't think this has had a Blu-ray release. I know it hasn't had a DVD release in the UK. This is the German release. Again, disc. It's even got like a little thing on the inside. It's got the chapter, the chapter selection on the inside, and on again on the inside of the packet on the thing, it gives you different uh, releases that are available from Concord, which is the release that this is. Now, again, this is a film that like had I not heard about it or had I not owned it I'm never ever have been able to to watch it because it's never on TV in the UK but I found out that the Denzel Washington one was a remake starring uh, and uh, of an original film starring Scott Glenn and being a fan of Scott Glenn I was like I need to I need to find this movie I looked on YouTube. It's not on YouTube. Well, it wasn't on YouTube when I found it. But they had the trailer. And I was like, right, I've got to track this movie down. Like, I love Man on Fire, the Tony Scott version. But I need to see where it came from. Like, what the actual movie, original movie is like. Nine ninety nine. this cost me. From Germany, free shipping. I now have, I have it, I have it. I have a physical copy of the original Man on Fire. So whenever I want to watch, if I, I could be just thinking of a movie and then all of a sudden I'll be like, I could really go for watching that. I really fancy watching that film. Oh, it's not on any streaming site. Mm, and I don't particularly want to buy a, a version of it on Amazon Prime because if it gets pulled... I've lost it and I've lost the money, but if I can find it on DVD at a reasonable price, I can, I can, just, I'm, I'm, I'm golden. I can sit there. I can watch it. It's fantastic. So while I'm not against streaming at all, because streaming does have its place, maybe not as, uh, as a great catalogy place for um, classic or sort of forgotten movies, for originals, it's fantastic. For TV shows, thumbs up.
because I don't want to pay forty five, fifty five pound for a like full collection TV show that I'm only ever going to watch once. So just like the other night, I started watching the X Files. Four episodes in, I was just like, "Do you know what? It's I know I know people love it. It's just not for me." So if I'd spent like ninety quid or whatever it was on a full box set of the X Files on DVD and only watched four episodes, I'd essentially be out ninety quid because it's not it's just not something I want. So for TV shows, streaming is amazing, but for movies. Unless you want to watch a Ryan Reynolds action comedy on Netflix or um, the Marvel movies or Star Wars movies. Now, don't get me wrong. Star Wars, you should own on physical media. I don't really care about the Marvel movies. I think I own like seven or f five or six, five, six or seven. Nothing. For I got Endgame and um, the other one before it. Like, I don't care about the Marvel movies. Like, if I want to watch them, I'll just watch them on Disney+. Plus. I'm not going to spend money and buy the 3D whatever it is the 4k again 4k like i'll only buy the, if i'm gonna buy 4k i'll buy 4k of films that i really like but physical media as a as a thing now needs to be sort of collected just so you've got more of a broader selection of films to watch. I mean, my collection, all these, are essentially culty movies. There's a couple of newer movies in there. I mean, I've got the... I've got, the, like, the Spider-Man movies and stuff. And, like, Upgrade. But then I've also got... stuff like uh, Lady Snowblood. Or uh, a Miracle Mile. And if you want to get really uh, randomly obscure, I think I've got some... Where is it? One very obscure... Here we go. Robinson Crusoe on Mars. Based on Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe story. This is a very... This is actually a pretty cool film. But this is... Um, actually, this film... this The transfer on this looks pucker. I think this was released in America as well. But this, again, this is the German release. Um, yeah, so I, I've got these movies. These movies are here when I want to watch them. Now, I won't be able to find Robinson Crusoe on Mars on Netflix or Disney+. Plus. You might be able to find it on YouTube. Again, in a really bad quality VHS rip. Um, or on Amazon Prime where it's like nine ninety nine to own a HD version, which again, while it might be HD, it's not full HD because of uh, compression and stuff. So owning a DVD collection or a movie collection during a um, sort of streaming age is probably more important now because you're more preserving cinema than you are like, I know these videos aren't really watched by the general public. These videos are for us. They're for us. We're collectors. We all watch these movies. We collect movies. Excuse me. So if someone comes across this and asks what physical media is, I'll be like, they can watch this video and be like, oh, DVDs, Blu-rays, 4Ks and VHS. So it's important to have a collection Maybe not as big as some people. Mine's pretty massive. Again, this is only a very small percentage of my collection. I've been collecting for 20-odd. No. Since I was collecting VHS before that, before DVD. So I'd say 25, 30 years. Well, not 30 years. Twenty Since I was 15, I'm 40 now. So since I was 15, I've been collecting VHS tapes, then DVDs, then Blu-rays, and I've got maybe a couple of 4Ks. So I, I've been collecting for a long, long time. But you can pick up DVDs so cheaply. I mean, charity shops are fantastic. Second-hand places like, like um, Cash Generator or uh, CEX. Like, CEX is amazing. I bought four movies today. It cost me eight pounds seventy-five on Blu-rays. 
for Blu-rays. And yeah, so you can collect them and pick them up for very, very cheap compared to $9.99 on Amazon or however much it is for a subscription. I know subscriptions, you're getting a lot for you. You're getting a fair amount for your money. But how many of us sit down and just scroll, 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 scroll through Netflix? I mean, the interfaces are so convoluted on these on these streaming sites that it's really difficult to uh, like navigate to a film that you really want to watch. Netflix, in particular, is a nightmare. When Gareth Evans' uh, Apostle came out on uh, Netflix, uh, it was all this talk from the director of The Raid. And The Raid 2, the first English-language movie from director Gareth Evans. They were pushing this movie like hell. It was a good, a fantastic movie. Well... It was good. I wouldn't say it was as good as The Raid. But they pushed this movie so much on social media and on YouTube and, and stuff like that. But on the day it was released, I had to search for it. It wasn't on the front page. If you know what I mean, it wasn't on the front page of Netflix where I could just log in and click. But on movie release days, you can either pre-order and it's here the day it's out. Or you can just go to use. Well, I'm, I don't know what it's like now. Most of my DVDs are bought. I buy secondhand or I go to HMV. But I don't buy re stuff on release because it's usually gonna go cheaper in sales. But you could just go to the shop and buy it. You knew where it was. It was in new releases. You didn't have to like scroll or or search for a movie on DVD or Blu-ray when it was on release day. You could just go and. Go to HMV. It's there. As you walk in the shop, it's right in front of you on new release shelves. But you've got to search through Netflix just to find one movie. When you got a collection, you just got to look for A, B, C or D. And it's there. If you know that you've got it. Like, it's the abyss. Come on, watch the abyss. It's there. You don't have to download it or search through um, pages and pages of para, uh, Prime Video just to find it. So it's important to have a collection, not just because of the lack of films that are on streaming, but as like a preservation of, of stuff. This is what I mean. Like, so... Felix the Cat, the movie. It's, it's, it's a random film. But I have a physical copy of this really bizarre 1987. I do believe it's German. Animated film. Where else would you find this? So yeah, I just think physical media in 2023 is probably it's probably more important now for people to collect than it was maybe 10 15 years ago because there are stores that are getting rid of DVDs and Blu-rays but there are stores that have countless amounts of second-hand movies that you can get cheaper and um, like I said, I'm not saying build up the world's biggest collection, but how many of us have just sat there and gone, I really want to watch this film, but it's not on any streaming services. If you had it on DVD or Blu-ray, you wouldn't have to worry. So, yeah. Also, thanks everyone for um, watching the last video. And uh, I think I've gone up like 30 something, 32, 33 subscribers. Since I posted that, it's hit like nearly 6,000 views, which blows my mind. I made a thank you video, which not many people have watched. But um, yeah, cheers for watching. That's just me having a chat about physical media and uh, streaming. And it was 25 minutes long. You don't have to watch the whole video. If you did watch the whole video, thank you very much. But for me, peace.